I had like tears like pouring down my face. Like it's like I would say exactly because as a speaker, like that's what you yeah. like live for. Like, so how do you coach people when you have just a natural ability when you just show up and you're like you don't practice anything, yeah, you don't do anything, but yeah, you're coaching someone to speak. Yeah. They might not have the same ability as you to to do like. Let's just do and it. I'm not in, and I'm not expecting that either. Yeah. So right? how do you teach them to speak then? Every fight, he always is nervous. He doesn't sleep well. He wakes up in the morning. He's tossing and turning because he's like, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do in this fight. I'm trying to think of the strategy. And he goes out there and he kills it. And he had this one opponent where everybody's like, George, you got this. You got this. You're going to crush this guy. George went to bed. And he slept peacefully. He was blessed. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, man, I'm good. Woke up in the morning. Ah, it's fight day. And then he got his ass handed <coughs> to him. Right? He was too up there. So I never want to be too up there. I always want to have a little bit of... Hello and welcome to Thoughts Over Everything podcast. This is the podcast where we receive stories, tips, and tactics from entrepreneurs who have done it. Today, we are interviewing Jam Gamble. I need to have some announcements, you know what I'm saying? Major announcements. Major announcements, you feel me? So, yo... Oh, what's good with you, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's a Saturday. The sun is shining. Yeah. You know, like I was saying earlier, we don't have a lot of Saturdays left, mm. especially living in this country, man. It's just you got to enjoy every weekend because I, I, I calculated we have like about 14 weekends, um, especially like after spring. And each one is like so scarce. So like this being in August, we have this is like the the uh, like this, you know, the second week of August. So mm -hmm. we have two more weekends left and then it's back to school. Like, not for us, but just in general, like, the back-to-school energy is, like, in the air, you know? That's a fact. And uh, that's, like, when everyone's in grind mode, like, holiday mood is over. So I just try to enjoy life, man. Try to mm -hmm. enjoy spending with people I love and and uh, just kick it. Kick it. And pod. And do these things. Yes, you know, the pod's yeah. growing. Yeah. Speaking of which, shout-out to Jordan. Yesterday I was out uh, at a restaurant and uh, – uh, someone reached out to us. This is shout shout us out and you know, mm -hmm. big us up for for the podcast content. So it's like we're a big shot now, finally famous. Don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, now man. I'm a celebrity. You how know, did the, how did that feel, man, to be recognized like that? I mean, it's not the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it really starts to, uh, you know, it, it helps because you don't really know what what's happening. Mm -hmm. We don't. Our community is very in, like one sided. We yeah. talk a lot, yes. but they don't give us as much feedback. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's good to actually get that feedback back. Yeah. So we can, you know, but oh, okay, this is resonating. You know, mm -hmm. it makes you mm -hmm. feel like absolutely you're not talking to a silo. Yeah, and it also motivates you more because as we're out here like recording, making this content, you know, if you don't see the engagement, if you don't see the the love, the li I mean, we see the likes, but just like seeing people, hey, good job, guys, like whatever, whatever. It's hard to know how well you're doing and if people really like the work that you're producing. So, you know, the feeling that you had, I also had a similar one when I was out. I think I got a haircut. And every time I go to like, I, I, to get a haircut, I go through the uh, the mall at the Eaton Center. Mm. I ran into this other guy I knew and he was with this girl. I've never met his girl. She doesn't know me or whatever. But she was just like, hey, I think I've seen uh, your clips on social media like is it like yellow like is your branding yellow i'm like yeah i've seen it pop up on my feed a lot i'm like oh yeah it's like yeah i like your show i listened to a couple episodes i'm like wow like you don't know what that means like that means a lot a lot a lot just saying great work good job on your show and i don't know her mm -hmm. you know so yeah. i always find it's the people who don't know you that are the ones to give you the most praise and actually respect and love for the stuff you're creating but maybe the people that know us they just think that we know that they know that they think that we know that like they like our stuff mm. so they don't need to say it yeah so i'm like all right like cool so it's it's um it's fun hearing that stuff man it really motivates me you know what i think it is i think it's the categories mm. you know like someone will see you in a specific category and put you in that box. Yeah. So if a new person encounters you and sees you as a podcaster, you're now in their life 
as a podcaster. Whereas someone comes into your life as a friend, you're now putting that bucket as a friend. And it's hard for them to recognize that you are something else. You know? So so that's one of the things. You have a flyer, ladies and gentlemen, that has been bothering us. It's been notorious. So yeah, we have a guest speaker. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You're going to hear a buzz in (laughs) Word, word, word. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Fly, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's nice to have you. How are you doing? It's a fly guy. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah. So we have some announcements we want to get into real quick. Of course. So one of the main announcements that we want to talk about is we are going back to our old format. You know, we've been looking at our numbers. Mm-hmm. We realized a lot of you guys liked our old format mm-hmm. with the business tip of the week, with the hustle nation. So that's one of the things we're going to get into today. And that's what things we're gonna do going forward. You know what this is, man. This is like a throwback jersey. Yeah, <laughs> this is our throwback. We're like the Toronto Raptors with the, with the stripes. With the stripes are like you know the uh, the dinosaur in the in the front of the jersey. People rated that. We thought people hated it, but you know, we just took one feedback from like a very strong, avid listener. They share. I don't really mind. I don't really care for that stuff. I just go dub straight into the interview. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. Like, mm-hmm. if you're a fan and you don't really like that, then a lot of people who like the show must not like this either Mm -hmm. so um yeah so we're bringing that back and i I enjoyed that like it really brought our personalities like you're very business oriented and like you like the technical stuff like all the new stuff like the the know-hows on how to do things i'm more of like the motivational inspirational uh the mindset part of things which i like thrive on those things so it really allowed us to be ourselves in a way that like just to start the show Mm -hmm. and i'm so happy to get back into that most definitely man yeah so what what has been on your mind in the news, bro? Talk to me. In the news? Yeah, you want, should we should we talk about it? Or should we save it for a wild card? Ah, right, let's save it for the wild card. Save it for the wild card. Yeah, yeah. So your wild card coming out very soon, um, after this Jam Gamble episode. So this will be next week. So stay tuned to take in our wild card. Mm-hmm. I, I think some of the things we'll be talking about include Andrew Tate, mm-hmm. uh, the Kingston Fest manifesto. So I think it's going to be a good one. I'll make sure you tune in. Anything else we're covering that you want to talk? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. The, the LinkedIn viral. Crying po- photo. Yeah, yeah. The yes. crying photo from crying the guy. CEO. So, yeah, make sure you tap into that one when it comes out next week after this Jam Gamble episode. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. with that being said, let's hop into our business tip of the week, shall we? Let's do it, man. Kick us off. So one thing that I have been doing, you know, as a marketer is writing a lot of copy, you know. And as well to that, one thing that's really been helping me is just segmenting the audience. Um, When it comes to working with clients and working with other businesses, segmenting an audience has been one of the most critical things that's helped me um, with dealing with different clients and growing businesses because the 80-20 rule, you know, 80% of your results come from 20% of the people, um, has been true and true throughout anything that I've been working with. So um, what I found is when I'm working with a client or anybody, Finding that segment within their customer base has been a game changer completely. So what do I mean by that? When it comes to writing copy, focusing on the people that are in that segment has been one of the things that has helped me and helped my clients go forth and conquer. One example that I can bring up is um, I was working with a a small business um, and she was selling sauce, right? So we used uh, this segmenting ex- experience where we just, all right, who are some of your customers? Broken down into three segments. Mm-hmm. And one segment we created different ads for and different yeah. copy for. Mm-hmm. And once that went out, we spent $300 because, like I said, small business, and she made 5000 mm-hmm. from using that segmenting methodology. Wow. You know what I'm saying? 5K. 5K from spending 300. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? It's a great ROI. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's one of the business tips I want to mention today is focusing on segmenting your audience using the 80-20 rule with that. Mm-hmm. So you can double down on the people who are paying you the most yep. to make the most money for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, um, and some of the tools that can help you with that, because a lot of us, we're busy and we can't write copy for a lot of those different segments. We can identify them easily, but to actually execute on making copy for them Mm -hmm. becomes a little bit tougher. So one of the tools I've been using is copy.ai. A lot of us have seen ads for them, but haven't really used it. I took the plunge and said, you know what, I'll give you a shot. And it's been really helpful when it comes to writing ads for Instagram and Facebook, Mm -hmm. writing ads for website copy, and they actually break it down into different aspects of your business where you'll write copy. You know what I'm saying? And this is not sponsored, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is completely off of my own experience to to help you guys out. If copy.ai sees this, 
Give us a shout. Throw us the bag. Throw us the bag. <laughs> you feel me? You know? So um, what I really liked about it is that it gave you a ton of different variations mm. and allowed you to edit and ask for more of that variation. Mm. So as a Facebook marketer, it's not going to give you the exact thing you want, mm -hmm. you know? But it gives you different words and different um, persuasive tools to add to your copy mm -hmm. to have it sell better. Yeah. You know, so that's one of the things that has really been helpful for me. So if you have any of those, also competitors to copy.ai, and I'm talking about the free version specifically. So this is a free version. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's one this tip of the week, you know. First off, segment your audience yep. and create copy for that audience. Mm, amazing, man. This um, That business tip definitely brought flashbacks to... Is it March? Not March. Like April 2020, May 2020. Talk to me. You know, we're like back in the, you know, the virtual. Like we roll out of the, you know, in the morning, get out of bed, start potting. Mm -hmm. Just seeing you give the business tip of the week. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, wow. It's like we're starting. We're starting from like square one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were just we were going at it consistently, bro. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So talk to me, bro. Let's get into the hustle nation. My yo, yo, yo. You know what time it is. It's Mr. Hustle Muscle on the mic, ready to give you the Hustle Nation tip of the week. So ladies and gentlemen, the Hustle Nation tip of the week is you're always on your own acres of diamonds, all right? So what does that mean? When you're saying your own acres of diamonds, a lot of us are always searching for opportunity in the distance. You know what I'm saying, Al? We're always looking at, you know, where can I go to start a business? Where can I go to... You know, we're always searching for things in the distance, but a lot of the times, the things we want are actually right where we're standing. Like a lot of the opportunities you want are right in your city. The business you want to start is right in your city. You don't need to go to San Francisco to start a tech company. You don't need to go to um, Thailand or some other nation to go find yourself. A lot of that stuff is internal. So when you're saying in your own acres of diamonds, it's more in the spiritual realm and more than the physical realm, more than anything. A lot of the stuff that you want is actually internally. You bring it out of you. You don't go searching in the distance for it. So in your own acres of diamonds, if you want a better friendship, if you want a better relationship, if you want a better business, if you, if you want a better life, don't seek for it in the distance. First claim it internally because you are a diamond. You know what I'm saying? Like you are a diamond wherever you're sitting on. You can always find the better things like by switching your mindset into thinking like you are the one, you are a diamond. So when things are going bad, you're always on a landmine of opportunity because if you switch that mindset into something positive, you're gonna see the best in everything and you're gonna access the things that you want because you're bringing it out of yourself. So when you're looking this week, when you're looking for a new opportunity, a new gig or whatever it is, first claim it inside, first claim it within yourself, feel as if like, you are the one to access these things. If you're in a better relationship, believe that relationship is happening right now. Like you are standing on that acre of diamonds where you're experiencing the best of everything. And once you have that mindset, things will change for you, right? Things will happen for you like slowly. So one term that I have when I visualize is I ask myself, isn't it wonderful? Like the feeling of being ecstatic for something, even though you don't know what you're ecstatic about. Isn't it wonderful? When you ask yourself that, like what is wonderful? What you gotta do is you just gotta suspend that judgment of asking yourself what is wonderful and just feel that feeling of like goodness inside of you. And that's how all miracles happen. When you feel good, things just change. So you're on your own acres of diamonds and just ask yourself every day, not even ask, tell yourself every day, isn't it wonderful? What is wonderful? You don't care what's wonderful, it's just wonderful. And feel good about that and just see things start changing in front of you. So that is a Hustle Nation tip of the week. I wish you all an amazing start to the day, an amazing start to whatever it is you're starting on today with this new mindset. And let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, we have Jam Gamble coming on the show today. So Owen, for people who don't know, who's Jam Gamble? So if you're unfamiliar with Jam Gamble, Jam Gamble is a world-renowned speaker. She has her own business called Slay the Mic, 
which empowers women to bring the best version of themselves. She's also had her own TV show on CBC. She's also featured in The Social. She's a cast member on The Social right now. She just lights up the room wherever she goes. She has a very powerful voice, very charismatic. And on the show today, she's going to talk about her business, how she's been able to scale that business and, you know, charge great fees that, you know, pay her comfortably, give her the life that she wants. And uh, one thing that stood out to me with Jam is like, you know, she can be more successful than she is, she is already, but she's attained a level of like financial security, happiness within her job that she doesn't need to have like an excess of like opportunities because, you know, they're always going to be there. So in this podcast today, you're going to learn how to, you know, scale a public speaking business like her, how she started, like the path that she took to get there. And she's also going to share some tips about speaking on how you can bring the best version of yourself wherever you are, how to project your voice, how to have great body language, all the little nuances of being a you know, great communicator. Because as business people, we know that communication is the main thing. Facts. So how are you going to pitch that meeting? How are you going to answer that phone call? How are you going to network with someone in a room? And how do you present yourself? So you know, in the midst of like all our banter in this pod, there's a lot of great information you can take on how to build a business like hers and uh, ultimately how to you know present yourself to the world to be the best version of yourself facts with that being said let's hop into the pod let's get it but ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of hustle over <laughs> everything this is the podcast where you receive stories tips and tactics from entrepreneurs who have done it today we have a treat for you have a treat when I say treat, I mean treat. A nice treat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We made sure we had wine for her. We made sure she had some fries for her. Her favorite. You, you know what I'm saying? Because yep. we make sure she's treated right. This is good. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jam Gamble with us today. I feel special. Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm good. You treat like a VIP because you are a VIP. I am VIP. Exactly. Yes. yes. Thank you for recognizing that. Got to pay respects. You, you know what I'm re- saying? Good, good job doing your research. Good job. Yes, yes. Most definitely, man. So to kick things off. I want to know something, you know, because you're a speaker, you know, you specialize in public speaking and yeah. speaking overall, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, what speech impacted you? You know, I would love to just like go around and just talk about a speech that impacted you. When I, when I say that, what comes to mind? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so when the Panorama Ding Dong kicked off, mm-hmm. obviously my line of work was deeply affected, mm-hmm. right? My, my, my work revolves around people. It revolves around being on a stage, a microphone in my hand. So when virtual events started to pick up, you know, I had a bit of hope in Mm -hmm. me. Um, And I used to do a lot of school talks, and I was doing one talk one day, and I like to wrap up my school talks singing, like, Lean On Me. Off key, but I sing Lean On Me because it it brings the message home of supporting one another and being kind. Like singing, like, a cappella? Yeah, I sing it, yeah. And then the the kids get into it, right? So I was like, I can't hear you right now, but I'm imagining I could hear your voice. And Mm -hmm. the principal's like... Actually, I could hear them singing down the hallway. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. So I wrapped up my talk and I said, you know, I really wish that I was at your school and I got to see your faces and get to meet you. So thank mm-hmm. you. And there were kids who were in school, but there was also children who were still virtual. And that meant they had control of their microphones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so one kid, he turned on his, his microphone and his camera and he had like his headphone on. He goes, no, no, thank you, Miss Gamble. Um, it, your presentation was really well done, and it's obvious you worked really hard on it. And I heard them clap. And that wow. was my first time hearing a round of applause in months. Yes. You know, like virtually, okay, maybe they might turn on, but you know that's going to mm-hmm. cause a lot of feedback, right? But to hear them clap, I cried. I started crying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, thank you. And I had, like, tears, like, pouring down my face. Like, it's, like, I would say. Exactly. Because as a speaker, like, that's what yeah. you, like, live for. Like, that gratification. But I normally don't. Speech. Yeah. I normally don't. It's the feedback you get afterwards. It's the messages you get. It's kids coming up to you or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And just to hear. And I was like. <laughs> and being respectful, Miss Gamble. I know. <laughs> I was destroyed. And I think yeah. that was probably, like, the highlight. Of all the talks I've done during the pandemic was yeah. that school. I think it was like Queen of Haven um, who gave me that round of applause. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Queen of Haven. Man. I know. Shout out to them. Yeah. What about you, Al? The biggest speech that's impacted me. Um, less brown, it's possible. I remember like when I was getting into like entrepreneurship and I was like trying to 
build up my courage to like launch a business mm -hmm. and I came across less Tell us to act on our dream. What's one of those keys that will begin to help us to discover the secrets to our dream? Here's what I want you to repeat after me, please, with power and conviction. Say, it's possible. That's all I want you to do when you look at your dream. You say to yourself every day, it's possible. You say that every day to yourself, it's possible. And I was just like so captivated by his, old, like his energy, like it's possible, it's possible, it's possible. Yeah. I kept saying that to myself so many times, like where I actually believe like I can do anything. And I launched like my first business in high school just because of Les Brown. And I've listened to that speech like 50 times. Les Brown is a G on Facebook. Yeah. He's like, he yeah. even came to Toronto one time and I was like, damn, like I wish I could go see him. But he was coming from like his sickness. He was sick for a minute. Mm. And um, yeah, like it's possible. It's like my favorite speech of all time. Well, it just shows you the power of like of people speaking, right? Yeah. Like that it could have a lasting impression and mm -hmm. you can remember it months and years like mm -hmm. to come. Yeah, it's a classic, classic, mm -hmm. classic speech. Yeah. Yo. You know the speech I'm talking about? I don't. Okay. How, do you know this speech? No. Yeah. But you know Les Brown. Of I do know Les yeah, Brown. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. Man, y'all have some amazing speeches because mine feel, feels so ratchet in comparison. Which one is it? But it's so, special to you. No, it's special to me. So my, mine is Mike Tyson's, like when he won. Oh. And he's like, I'm the Alexander. They ain't no Alexander. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm from <laughs> Nick Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Did it get you hype? It, it, it no, gets no, no, me no, so hype. It's a good speech. Bro. It's a like, good speech, yo. <laughs> no, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody who's ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nair Claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Dude, I knew that speech like memory like because mm -hmm. i used to watch all these motivational channels like that's how i came across les brown and uh mike was there like after just a big fight and the uh, comment you know this speech man like mm -hmm. he's just like i'm Alexander. he's like Xander. i'm the best ever i'm, I'm the most ruthless most vicious champion there's ever been there's no one like me is whatever i'm Alexander. Whatever. but i remember I just remember like feeling one. the chills yo behind that conversation like that um that speech. i'll eat your children i thought <laughs> I thought you were gonna bring up. You said Mike Tyson, right? Yeah. I thought you were gonna bring up the interview he did on CP24. I, well, I wasn't gonna say the man's <laughs> name. I was gonna yeah, spare yeah. him you know, like, of when he brought up that very confrontational, had no business asking him this question yeah. like, for his book tour, up? and yeah. he called him. Yeah, like, you're yeah. a bitch. You know, a rat. Yeah. You're a bitch. He was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to work at Good Life, and Nathan Downer used to come all the time. You, you stop here saying the man's name. For the record, I didn't say the man's name, eh? I mean, so it's no one, public knowledge. No one knows. Like, it, yeah, it's public knowledge. No one say anything to me. I didn't say the man's name. Maybe one day forget Nathan, and he's just like, hey, I heard like when Jam came on, you mentioned my name. Keep my name. No, what are you up on you like my name? Keep my name out your, mouth. Name out your <laughs> mouth. And I just be in the corner like. <laughs> yeah. like I I, say don't nothing. say I warned you. Didn't say nothing. Well, most definitely. <laughs> Question <man>. number two. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the successes you're proud of? Oh, wow. You see, questions like this are always difficult for me to answer because I don't I don't keep track. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I move with intention. Everything I do, my intention is to have a positive impact. So I don't mm -hmm. really think about what my successes are mm -hmm. and I don't yeah mm -hmm. but I would I would say if I was to really think about it it would be the people who stop me on the street and literally stop me on the street in the grocery store wherever they see me and say you put out a video mm -hmm. that talked about knowing your your worth mm -hmm. um, I was in Vancouver last year for an event and and this woman came up to me and she she started crying and I'm like oh my gosh she's like oh I'm so embarrassed I'm like no 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 don't worry like and she's like I bought this yellow bag because of you because you talked about your value and being unapologetic in your yellow bag and I went out and bought my own yellow bag mm -hmm. and so I would I would say things like that but I don't keep a mental log because mm -hmm. I just know that everything I do my intention is to impact people to uplift them to inspire them to encourage them to teach them so I would consider everything I do a su uh, success. Mm. Even like the failures, like because the failures can stick out. So, to be honest, <coughs> I can't think of many failures. Mm -hmm. What does failure mean to you? Um, thing something not going as planned, and then you have the option to do it again. Mm -hmm. So, 
I don't know if I really failed because I don't know if I necessarily set a standard for me that would re, you know would would include the possibility of failing. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think I think about failure. <laughs> mm, <laughs> like yeah. I think I just operate and whatever the outcome is, I'll deal with it when it comes about, but I don't think about failure. Mm. So how do you assess things? Like how do you assess it based on the success level or you know a, a, a metric that that lets you move towards something or away from something? Um I th- <sighs> Well, I guess the obvious would be money. Yeah, of course. I made 10 bands. I made, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but there's a difference between making money and then talking about how much money you made mm-hmm. versus making money and then being able to see where that money went. I was able to do that for my family. I was able to become debt free. I was able to invest in that. That's how I look at money. Mm-hmm. I don't look at how much I made last year. In fact, um, my operations manager, shout out to Ashley. She keeps track of that. Mm-hmm. And she took a screenshot one time and she goes, since you don't like to pay attention to it, here you go. And I was like, I'm sorry, who's money? Who made that? <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. And she's like, you did that. I was like, I yeah. me. Because I don't, I do mm-hmm. not track it. Mm-hmm. I think I just exist. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm like your typical entrepreneur. I mm-hmm. think I just exist. What do you mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> just, <laughs> I just like, these, these things are questions that, I think as entrepreneurs, we are expected to have the answer to. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the answer to them because I just exist. I do Mm -hmm. what I got to do. I operate day by day. I don't have a five-year plan. I don't have a 10-year plan. Um, I'm I'm a very impulsive entrepreneur, so I don't have plans. Like, Mm -hmm. even my my wedding is – that that was a sign just like how I operate. Like most brides would have like a wedding planning book and I got one because everyone told me to have one. Mm -hmm. And the first page had like a rough idea of what our budget was going to be. And I never wrote in it ever again because I'm impulsive. I operate in the now. If it doesn't work out, no biggie. I'll try again. I don't, I don't do a lot of strategy. I operate off of gut. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I don't, yeah. You know, that's kind of like Richard Branson too. You know, he's Ah. like, A maverick like that, like mm-hmm. he gets ideas for all these marketing strategies, like and that's how I operate. And that's how you operate. That's right? how I operate. And he's been super successful, right? Yes. But to you, like, don't you think as you ascend even further that honing it down and actually having some frameworks can yes. definitely yeah. take yeah. It to the next level? Like, yes. And I and I recognize like, that. Exactly, I yeah. I recognize that, and I think I was allowed to get away with this mm-hmm. for so long. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh no, girl, you gotta, you gotta sit and plan. Mm-hmm. And I thought I hate planning. I hate strategizing. Mm. Um, I could be at home, and if I'm launching something, so if it's launch week for my course, if it's launch week for like a webinar or a masterclass, whatever it is, I could be sitting on my couch, and I'll be like, <gasps> and my husband's like, what am I? An idea, I gotta go by. And he's like, you gotta go record. I'm like, I gotta go record something, I gotta go by. And I, I go into my office and I record, and I come, I go, ah, mm-hmm. got it out. <laughs> like insight. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, and I he just that. knows, like he'll hear it, or he sees it, I'm like, all right, bye. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and then it's like your anniversary, and you're like insight. It could boom. be like you know, like in the middle of our vows. I'm like, bro, hold that thought. Yes. All right, husband, where were we? He yeah. must be a brave guy. He's eating too. He's eating too. So mm. he has to be on board with this. Yeah, mm. it's, like, it's like Drake with the blackberry. You know, <laughs> like it's a it's a way back reference. Yeah, but I think we all know what I'm talking about. Like, like they used to say that they used to have spare blackberries just for just Drake. For Drake's just to be right like, bars. oh yeah, oh he has it. All right, yo, yeah, take it, this. Take and, this. You yeah. know, my people know. My people who know me know that's how I operate, and it hasn't failed me yet. But mm-hmm. I do recognize that I'm going to have to create systems. But I'm not creating systems because people tell me I have to create systems. I'm creating systems so that I'm just operating in a space where I feel inspired but clear-minded and in control not because this is what i'm supposed to do mm-hmm. but it's because i feel i'm ready to do it because mm-hmm. if you said. i don't feel like doing it i'm not doing it <laughs> you like you said now i feel like you're very right-brained right um how do you manage that as an entrepreneur I'm, i mentioned i know you said that you have an operations manager yeah shout out to ashley she's my right brain <laughs> your left brain she's my right left center All cortex <laughs> That that thing that looks like a cabbage, what's it called? Hippocampus. I don't even know. She's mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got you. Um. So, what does she do that allows you to just focus on your 
business, you know? Cause I think a lot of entrepreneurs are at that stage where they just are creative, something like that too. Like mm-hmm. Owen is the left brain for me, mm. you know? Cause I become like, yo, I have this idea. And Owen's like, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. Chill. <laughs> Let's, let's figure this let's out. Launch. Let's let's hit this person up. I'm like, yo, we don't even know. Right. <laughs> you know. Yes. Um, she keeps me disciplined and she helps me set boundaries that I don't realize that I need to set. So she recognizes that I'm very right brained. Um, I'm very impulsive. I get excited. I wanna do it now. I wanna do all the things. Um, and when she approached me to actually work with me, the analogy she used was let me hold the baby. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've been running every aspect of my business for like five, six years. I was mm-hmm. doing my invoices. I was getting my contracts ready. I was handling my bookings. I was doing my slide decks. And I still do all those things. And my social media. And mm-hmm. showing up. All the things. She's like, let me have the baby. I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. She's like, I could help you have the baby. And then you could go do something else. But I don't want you to have the baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was a whole. So I could get very excited about things. Or maybe like a a client comes that's a really big client and I want us to talk now and I want us to negotiate now and I want us to set a date now and she'll be like, easy, young grasshopper. This is corporate folks. They don't operate in jam time. They operate in seven to 10 business days. Sit down. Okay. (laughs) And so how's that like for you? Because you seem like someone who's like very, you know, like you're the decision maker headstrong, like, this is what I'm going to do. No one can stop me. Yeah. To have someone tell you, yeah, hey, relax yeah. on your own business. I know. How do you manage that? I manage. You I manage. manage. It hasn't, I know what her, her intentions are. And her mm-hmm. intentions are for me to be uh, the best version of myself. So I know when she's telling me to chill, I need to chill. Mm-hmm. Or if I need to sleep, sleep. Or if I'm going on vacation or I'm doing like a collab with a hotel, she'll be like, I don't want you posting in real time. Like, please take time to relax. So I know she's coming from a good place. And again, going back to that systems, I need someone like that to kind of check me um, before I possibly wreck myself. What are some of the systems you put in place that have been like life savers for you? Hiring her got you but like no because <laughs> i want to give our, like, value to our audience right so yeah like, you know, what are some of the things that like you're like man that system that you put in there yeah man, that really helped um well yeah one hiring her to um not getting too excited by every opportunity and learning how to say no and in the beginning i remember i said yes to everything mm-hmm. not everything you know i had some self-awareness to go that's not in alignment with my values and my brand but you want to do all the things because you don't know when your next check is going to come especially as a black speaker Mm -hmm. you don't know when that next corporate client's going to come you don't know if they're going to be willing to pay you that amount of money and so anything comes and you're like yeah i'll take that yeah i'll do that yeah Mm -hmm. i'll i'll do 500 bucks yeah i'll do a thousand here um and now we're like every time i reach a new milestone that means we're saying no to that person and that person and that person because now we're in a new league. Mm -hmm. And so my eyes sometimes are bigger than my capacity. I'd be like, I could do it. I could Mm -hmm. do another keynote. I could do five keynotes in one week. Mm -hmm. I could do all these things. She's like, no, you can't. No, you can't do these things. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm glad. That's for me, the systems that she's put in place have everything to do with wellness and and my mental health Mm. and if I didn't have her um, helping me with those two things, I I think I would have been like a wreck right yeah. now. Yeah. So, um, you know, we know like what you do now, but like let's like reel it back a little oh. bit, right? How did you get in this business? And like what was that flash of insight like you always get to be like, you know what? This is the direction I'm going to take my career to. Mm. Um, so I, I'll start by saying in high school, I was inspired by TLC. <laughs> When TLC was a channel we could learn from. Oh, I love TLC, too. Back then, not as now. A, as an immigrant, like, that's what my mom had on all the right. time. Right, yeah. right. My mom was an immigrant, too. So she, you know, they had us watching every Everything. personal development show to, or self-betterment, whatever it was. Um, so in high school, I wanted to be a culinary chef. I wanted to be an interior decorator. I wanted to be a, a midwife. Then CSI came out, and I wanted to be a CSI investigator. And then um, The Apprentice came out, and I saw Omarosa. I love Omarosa. Then, not now. Why don't, you, back. Why don't you like her now? 
I'm just looking at this camera right here. They know why. Omarosa now. I'm a big fan. Omarosa back in the day on The Apprentice. Omarosa rolling with Trump now? Nah. Um, so when she came out, that was probably the first time I saw a black woman portrayed in that manner on mainstream media. Mm -hmm. And she was cutthroat and strong and... She just knew herself, and I was like, I want to do that. So when I was in high school, I was getting into business. Um, my mom was heartbroken about me getting into business. Obviously, I listened to her. And my second passion was working with people with disabilities. So I went to school for that, graduated, um, and my mom's advice was basically, like, don't do what everyone else is doing. So I had approached Rogers Television um, to do an interview to talk about Autism Awareness Month because it was something so passionate to me. And I watched back the interview, and I looked good. I sounded good, but I didn't like my responses. And I think that was my first test in how do you view your voice. You have two options. You could stick with this, mm -hmm. or you could do a redo. And I reapproached them. I'm like, I have a different concept. But what happened was when I reapproached them and I went online, I thought when I was clicking show proposal, I was choosing whose show I wanted to be on mm -hmm. and not pitching a TV show. Mm -hmm. And then I pitched a TV show. And then I had a TV show. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's how, I, so that's all, how it all began. So it's all serendipitous. Yeah. And I'm sitting in this meeting like, he's talking about the layout and the setup. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, what is this? What is I'm like but let's just roll with it. Let's just roll sure, with it. Yeah, let's yeah. just go with it. And and then he, he called me the next <clears> day and he's like, um, Rogers wants you to do a pilot episode. I'm like, what's a pilot episode? Mm -hmm. So I Google pilot episode and like, oh, you know, it's like a rundown. Da, da, da. I got people. We did a pilot episode. I got the green light. So that's where, where my voice really started. But before that, I was running our school announcement club. Mm -hmm. That's wow. where it really began. Like college or high school? Elementary school, bruv. Oh, grade five grade announcement five. club. Middle school announcement club, high school announcement club. I did announcement club throughout the years. I my voice was always treated like a problem, mm -hmm. but doing the announcement club was the only place it was celebrated. Mm -hmm. So wow. here was this budding speaker without realizing it, but because I got into so much trouble with my voice, I didn't realize it was something I could make you know a business or a lifestyle out of. Got the TV show, had a TV show for six seasons, over a hundred episodes. I produced every single episode myself because this is community television. Mm -hmm. And I had no teleprompter. So if you were to go and look up any episode of my show, you will never see notes, a device, or a teleprompter because I winged every single episode. Wow. And that's where things started to kick off. And then I was like, well, what's the next thing that people do once they're like in media? Oh, they become a TEDx speaker. So I applied to be a TEDx speaker. They thought my concept was good, but they saw me on TV, thought I'd be better suited as the host. Um, again, they wanted me to write speeches and one thing i don't do as a speaker mm -hmm. i don't write my speeches mm. so i was like yeah y'all like i don't do that like i'm a free spirit like butterfly in the sky mm -hmm. i go to go twice as high mm -hmm. like i don't <laughs> and, and just for like our audience like what was that show that you're doing you're right good question um so it's called a voice for all and mm -hmm. it was all about uh disability awareness so it was a show where um individuals with disabilities community organizations parents could come and bring awareness to a topic that we as a community don't talk often about, and I'm an able-bodied person who does not have a family member with a disability, um, so I went to show people that you don't have to have a disability or know someone with a disability to care about people with a disability. Mm -hmm. And my background was in that. I had been working in summer camps and organizations for years, so it just made sense. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if I didn't do that show or work with people with disabilities who were mostly nonverbal, I don't think I would be the speaker I am today. Like, I'm so intuitive. I'm so connected to my audience. And I think that goes back to working with people on the spectrum who are nonverbal and communicating in other means and other mm -hmm. ways. So after that, I got to TEDx. Um, they hooked me up with a speaking coach. Another sign, right? Yep. I didn't know speaking coaches were a thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that people were scared of public speaking. Mm -hmm. That was news to me, right? Yeah. And so this the speaking coach, I managed to convince her to let me wing it. Because TEDx does not let you wing it. They want a piece of paper. They want to see what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. And I gave her, like, episodes of my show, and I'm like, trust me to wing this. They let me wing it, and when the talk was done, she gave me her card, and she goes, this is not for you. It's for somebody who needs it. Like, you don't need a coach. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. a natural. And I was like, that was the next sign. And then the third sign was... Um, I started doing community events. I 
um, I didn't want to be an internationally known speaker. I didn't want to be booked and busy flying all over the place. I wanted my community to know me first and foremost. My community raised me, therefore I wanted them to know me first. And the more events I did, the more people asked me, how do you do that? And I was like, what's that? And they're like, getting on stage and looking so comfortable. And the more people asked me, I impulsively over a morning cup of coffee decided I was gonna start a program. Mm -hmm. Like a public speaking program? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was never classically trained. I didn't do Toastmasters. Um, I, did, I did Toastmasters at Ryerson. That's nice. Yeah. Um, toast is great, but it's better with jam. I was, <laughs> mad. I, I, I had that. Bro, up. it's already yeah. been queued up. It's been queued I up. I say it all the time. I have ready. a shirt. I have a shirt. It says Toast is great, but it's better with jam. Mm -hmm. Have you taken? Have you tried a Toastmasters just to see what the program is about? Uh, no. no. My mom made me watch videos as a child, mm -hmm. and. I mean, I'm no shame to Toastmasters and what they do. There are many people who become incredible speakers because yeah. of that program. What I do is different. Mm, for sure. I don't do that. And they don't do what I do. So we're operating. They're not my competition because we're operating in different spaces. It's Nike and Runner Room. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, were you in radio too at one point? I was, yeah. So my mom, oh, bless my mom. That's who's calling me right now. Um, my mom, um, she launched a TV show at the University of Guelph. And she's like, you're doing a radio show with me. Wow, so this is in your genes. I guess. And she likes to say that she 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 prepared me for mm -hmm. this. Because like, we'd be doing the show together. So people can't see our faces, right? Mm -hmm. And so she, she'd be saying something. She's like, you do this. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, so, you know, and it forced me to be, like, on my feet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, being in radio helped me as well. I, I'm I'm an, a naturally born, naturally trained or self-trained, self-taught mm. speaker. Mm. And I'm still learning. Mm. And I'm still learning, though. Now, when it comes to speaking, you know, you're always speaking your mind. And sometimes I feel like it could almost be not detrimental. Yeah. But... It can have an effect on you, you know. Yeah. One thing I see going through social media, there's a sometimes there's a heaviness that that comes along with continuously speaking your mind, you know. And mm -hmm. sometimes it almost feels like people are coming to you as the voice for maybe the black woman sometimes, yeah. the voice to get get this person. They're, they're talking mm -hmm. all this foolishness. Yeah, that you know? was happening a lot in uh, 2020. Yeah, exactly. So how do how do you balance that, you know? I simply say that I am not the one. Don't like, maybe you could go to that person and place these expectations on them. Mm. I'm not the person to place those expectations on. Um, in 2020, when Black Lives Matter was taking center stage and everyone was you know, concerned about our black lives, um, there were a lot of white women mm -hmm. who were uh, tagging me in things saying, oh, you know, I wanna uh, shout out this black activist. And I had to do an Instagram live and I was like, hey, yo, let's read my Instagram bio. Jam Gamble, I'm the slayer of the mic. I've helped over 600 people turn their voice into their ultimate superpower. Psst, you're next. Tell me where it says activist. Mm -hmm. If I'm not calling myself an activist, who are you to call me an activist? Mm -hmm. I'm a black woman trying to survive. Mm -hmm. That's what I am. So I declared several times in 2020, I am not the person to tell me how, when, or why, or what I should be talking about when it comes to my voice. Don't you dare do that to me. <laughs> like, no. Nah. So that's how I do it. But don't you feel like those people think like, man, Jam is such a powerful speaker. Yes. Has that charisma, that gravitas. Mm -hmm. And they might not have the balls to do it themselves. But, you know, you've built like this voice, this audience of yeah. being able to captivate people. Don't you think like that's like a, like some of, I wouldn't even say an obligation, but just because you have that ability to do so, you know, people are looking at you to step up. And that's the problem, mm. right? When you place that expectation on people, it's not for you to decide. You can't do that. Like, I speak from the heart. I don't mm. speak out of obligation. If I speak out of obligations because there was an invoice involved, one, and two, because I chose to make that decision, not because mm -hmm. you made that decision for me. And again, it comes back to people's intentions and approach. I see things that are happening in the community. I see things that are happening in the media. And if I feel called to talk about it, I will speak about it. If I don't think that I have a place to speak about it, I'm not saying anything. But mm -hmm. if you come to me, you need to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Because yeah. it, if it's not coming from my heart, then it, it doesn't sit well with me. And I think one of the greatest things I have learned as a speaker is to 
is to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let people down, but the most important person I can't let down is myself. That's like Michael Jordan when when that in, in, when in, that whole was it next Netflix yeah mm -hmm. last dance when the last dance came out my husband told me I need you to watch this I was like why like I don't care about basketball I don't care about Michael Jordan he goes because you are Michael Jordan <laughs> he's like <laughs> you remind me so much and I'm watching I'm like oh yeah I see it yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's why I like LeBron and he feels like obligated to like speak on things because yeah. he's LeBron yeah but Mike. Um, OJ Simpson, they're like, <laughs> he's like, I'm not black, I'm OJ. You know what I mean? And at a point, I do see where he's coming from because it's just like, just because I'm black doesn't mean due to my fame, due to right. my ability on a football field, I'm now, I have the credentials to speak about this yeah. specific matter. So I can see it, but at the same time, like, there's not a lot of black successful figures. And I, can, I, I, under you know I understand that, but I rather speak with intention versus I was told to speak about something because I'm Jam Gamble. Mm, facts. That's not, you, no. <laughs> it's it, it just mm. a no. You know what I think of when I hear the, like, these situations go on? Is if there was a plumbing issue, you know, like, yeah. like a massive national plum issue like let's say in Nunavut right and it's like get an abri get an ind indigenous rapper to talk about it <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah it's like that doesn't make any sense to get someone who specializes in that to talk about it and I'm glad you <laughs> raised that point because I won't say the specific group because I don't want to ruffle feathers but last year there was a specific group where there was another group and another group who were grouping and there were people in my DMs like, well, you talk, we talked about Black Lives Matter. Why won't you talk about this? Am I because I'm not educated on that to speak mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. I understand that people believe that I am this voice and I am this public figure and I have this personality. I understand that. But I also have to think about my legacy. And I don't want to speak on something that I don't feel qualified to speak on. And then later it burns me. Mm -hmm. No, nah, I ain't doing that. Right. So I feel like it would be a good time to, to pivot into some money talks. Ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. the best. You know? So how do you make money? In speaking, coaching, media appearances, uh, influencing, collaborations. Um, that's it for now, I think. Mm, my courses. program, my course, my courses. course. Um yeah, I think that's, I mean, there might be some others. But that's the only, that's one you got multiple streams. I have multiple streams, yes. What's your favorite stream? Coaching. Coaching, eh? I love coaching. I, I love actually want to get deeper into that, right? Yeah. So you're a coach. Yeah. You coach people on speaking. Yes. So how do you coach people when you have just a natural ability, when you just show up and you're like, you don't practice anything, yeah. you don't do anything, but yeah, you're coaching someone to speak. Yeah. They might not have the same ability as you to to do like, let's just do and I'm not in, And I'm not expecting that either. Yeah. So right? how do you teach them to speak then? So my background isn't teaching. Okay. I'm an educator first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So I'm, a, I'm an educator before I'm a coach. Mm. Um, so I know how to teach and I know how to customize things to where my students are at. Um, and the first thing I tell everyone in my program is I do what I do because I could do what I do how I do it. I'm not creating a program for you to become the next Jam Gamble. You know? So maybe now I could wing it. Maybe right now you can't wing it. Maybe in the future you could wing it. My goal is to teach people how to trust their voice, first and foremost. And I'm able to do that very well. What are the steps to trusting your voice? Uh, hmm. One, believing in the power of your voice, believing in what you have to say, letting go of perfectionism, mm -hmm. um, and not thinking you have to sound like everybody else. That's the start. Mm -hmm. Everything else just kind of develops. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, what's the most common thing people come to you and they say, I have a problem with this? Like, when they're looking for your coaching. Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone's needs are different, but primarily I would say there are people who don't think that anybody's going to care what they have to say. And, and that's the first wall we need to knock down. And then the second wall we need to knock down are the self-limiting beliefs they have about their voice. Oh, I'm not a public figure. Oh, I'm not this. Oh, I have an accent. Or 
I don't have a, a vast vocabulary. And these are all the things that get in the way of me saying what I need to say. Mm -hmm. um, but every person I've worked with so far, like I haven't met one person who's the same. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it all comes down to believing in the power of their voice and loving the sound of their voice. Mm. Loving, the, if you don't like how you sound, how do you expect other people to like the sound of your voice and what you have to say? That's facts. Yeah. Mm. I was gonna give a pregnant pause for that. <laughs> Let that marinate. <laughs> you know? Now, keeping on the money part, yeah. you know, how have you been able to scale this business? I hate that question. <laughs> it is very textbook. Is it? this something we should ask um, Ashley? Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> ask Ashley. She'll she'll answer that. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, it feels very organic, actually. Mm -hmm. It feels very organic, what I do. Mm. And I think that's why I've been able to do it for so long. And the passion hasn't run out. And it's just because, like, I just, I just do it. And I think, again... When we think about entrepreneurship, that question of scaling, there is only one jam, jam gamble. Mm -hmm. There cannot be another jam gamble. <laughs> so I'm not gonna create an army of other people to go out and speak on my behalf or, no. or, to, or to coach my program as well. Even when I originally started, the program was supposed to be evergreen. Mm -hmm. That's the number <coughs> one goal for people, right? Mm -hmm. Have an evergreen program, make money while you sleep. As an educator, I teach best in real time. So I made that decision not to start off on an evergreen foot and to teach live twice per week. And that's what people come to my program for because I'm teaching in real time. I'm, I know you as a person. We are a community. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to scale certain things, um, but it's not my top priority right now. Mm. I like that, you know, because it, it, it feels like you're doing it on your own terms. Yeah. And it feels like there's more care into it. There's a ton of care. There's a ton of care because I'm invested in the people that I work with. I'm when the pandemic hit, I remember crying so many times when my program sold out and when I wrapped up my program because I told those people, thank you. I don't know what your individual situation is, but thank you for trusting me, trusting my program and investing in me. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not cheap. Right. So for me, the people come first, the money comes second. I'm immensely grateful for every single person who says, you know what, I want to work with Jam. I need some Jam in my life. Because without people, I, I wouldn't have a program. I wouldn't have mm -hmm. this brand. So again, like the question of scaling and all these things and all these systems, I know it works for some people. And I think it's very important for the entrepreneurs who are listening right now to find what works for you. That doesn't work for me right now. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. I'm operating in my own cookbook. I got a recipe, I tweak it sometimes. Maybe two cups of this, maybe one cup of that next time. It works for me right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe that works for that person. Kudos to them, salute. I'm doing things my way. And that's one, th one thing that I always say is like your hustle is what you can't control. Yeah, you know? and if I can't control, I'm out. Deuces. <laughs> yeah. Facts, and then that's something that I think not enough of us like really hone in on because we feel like we have to build it to a certain point to mm -hmm. compete or something of that nature. Yeah. But like, does that really bring you happiness? Mm -hmm. you know no, because I love teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love teaching. I love my program. I love my community. It brings me so much joy to see their transformation from beginning to end. Um, I'm I'm scared of what I would do if I didn't get to do that mm. Mm. like yeah. evergreen only automated systems <clears throat> yeah i get i get that my people give me fuel mm -hmm. do you ever get any returns like returns to what like continue working with me yeah, or like they don't like, want to like, work with me anymore yeah they're like yo i pay for the course yeah. <clears throat> and they teach you everything like yo you know what i want to return nope there was one person and she committed and due to her schedule, she couldn't. <coughs> but when I do my marketing leading up to sales week, I put out tons of content that tells people, miss me with your FOMO. If you know you do not have the means financially or emotionally to be in my program, I'm respectfully asking you not to enroll my program. I want people who are able to commit financially. If you have other things you got to take care of, tend to those matters first. Yep. My program will be here. You could enroll in another cohort. Mm -hmm. So 
anybody could tell you, Jam is not the type to make to, to kind of put that FOMO vibe on people like you never know when there's gonna be another cohort. Like, mm-hmm. are you sure you wanna miss out on this? No. So mm-hmm. no, no one has ever returned and said, ah, this program didn't do diddly squat for me. No. I worked too damn hard for that to happen. I love that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you teach people about public speaking and as business people, we have to do that like every day. All like, the time. Zoom calls, presentations, uh, pitch decks, negotiations, negotiations, yeah. everything. It's all about communication. So how, like a common thing about public speaking is nerves. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's nervous like when they approach someone or they're talking, even like one-on-one. Yeah. It's happened to me before, but you know, I, I got over it and I got better. How do you overcome the nerves to mm-hmm. give a great presentation or speech? Uh, well, I, I like to look at nerves in two ways. There's nerves that are like debilitating cramps that you're like killed over. You're like, oh my God, like mm-hmm. I'm in so much pain. But the nerves that I usually operate with are, I like to call them confetti in my belly. Confetti in your belly. Confetti in my belly. Got you. And it's a sign that I'm excited and I'm fired up. And I think the minute I lose nerves or I, or I lose that confetti, I need to check myself. Mm. That's a sign that I'm... I'm too gassed. I got to come back down just a little bit. Like, because you need it. And it reminds me of a, an, a, a talk I heard from George St. Pierre where he mentioned that before every fight, he always is nervous. He doesn't sleep well. He wakes up in the morning. He's tossing and turning because he's like, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do in this fight. I'm trying to think of the strategy. And he goes out there and he kills it. And he had this one opponent where everybody's like, George. You got this. You got this. You're going to crush this guy. George went to bed and he slept peacefully he was blessed mm-hmm. he was like oh man i'm good woke up in the morning ah, it's fight day <laughs> and then he got his ass handed to him mm. right he was too up there mm. so i never want to be too up there i always want to have a little bit of <sighs> that confetti in my belly mm-hmm. um but i don't strive for a great talk mm-hmm. i strive for an impactful talk i strive for a real talk i strive for an authentic talk and if it ends up being great awesome um, but that's never my main goal. Mm. So like now, like we're all in Zoom calls and everything, doing a speech on Zoom compared to in person is different. <laughs> There's one thing I, I heard, like when you stand up, when you're on like a Zoom call, like yeah. your diaphragm is standing up. Yeah. You can actually project your voice even better. I'm naturally loud, so. Well, I mean, but yeah. like, have you, <laughs> have you heard about this? Before? I have, but I've always sat down for all my Zoom talks. Really, eh? I I've, haven't stood stood up for a single one. I've tried to stand. I'm five eleven, <laughs> so like my my setup has to be like in the air. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, otherwise, like they're gonna look up your nose. Yeah, they're gonna be like, "Jam, where are you at?" Like, I see your chin. Um, yeah, I'm. As much as I had my ups and downs with Zoom calls or Zoom talks, I think it made me a better and more fiercer speaker. Mm. Fiercer speaker. Yeah, for sure. Because you couldn't see everybody, right? Like, mm-hmm. there was, especially with some of my corporate clients on Microsoft Teams, like, mm-hmm. you're not seeing your audience. I can't see their facial expressions. I can't see they're nodding their head. I can't see anything. I'm talking into darkness. Yeah. So it's for me to be like, it's jam time. But it's, do you feel like that gives the impact as if, if it was in person, because I can feel your energy. Yeah. But Zoom, I can just like. I'm a very visual speaker. Yeah. So when I speak, I paint pictures in my words. I speak to people or with people, not at them. So there's a lot of things that I do as a speaker that's really hard for me to explain that makes people feel like I'm in the room with them. So there wasn't a difference. There wasn't a big difference. I was still so doing like, what I do best. It's like your magic sauce. It's much. like my magic sauce. The only thing that I didn't have was shoes. It was mm. the same jam, just no shoes on. Sweatpants. Shout out to my tube socks. <laughs> um, no, I showed up classy. I had outfits on. I mean, there was one or two... 7 a.m. talks, you know, I, of course, I was in my, sweat, in my sweats or my, in my jammies, and I told them. Mm-hmm. I told them. I was like, I'm in my jammies right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Y'all going to get these PJs right now. But it was the same jam. Got you. I see. Yeah. I see. I want to get back to, the, to business talks, you know. Are you on offense or defense when it comes to approaching corporate clients? Oh, gosh. So, like, are you essentially asking if I've ever, like, pitched myself? I don't pitch. You don't pitch? You don't pitch? I've never pitched. You've never pitched? I've never pitched. Did you get that? I've never pitched. Ever. Why? I don't need to. 
Because you got it like that. I'm Jim Campbell. <laughs> you know how you know you know how Kevin Durant was just like, I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am, right? Because mm-hmm. they're like asking like, why are you not shooting the ball? Why are you like you can dominate this game? He's like, dude, I can just pass on offense. I can do this. I let the I let the game come to me. You know, it's just like I'm, I Kevin, I'm Kevin Durant. You know who I am. I've never pitched, and I've never had a reason to pitch because ninety nine point five percent of my bookings are referrals or people have seen me in action and mm. they've remembered me. That's a blessing. Okay, I've pitched one time. Let me take that back. Hold on. There was a conference for the platform that I use for one of my courses, mm-hmm. and they had a, a conference for speakers of color, and I went on my stories. I was like, hey, yo, me. And then I got to be a speaker. Mm. And then for CTV The Social, I did a story back in May of 2021. I was like, why haven't I been on The Social? The Social needs me. Mm-hmm. I'm Jam Gamble. I'm good at what I do. Bring me on the show. I think I made my 17th appearance last week. So maybe that, but other than that, I don't pitch. Mm. That's a form of pitching. That's definitely a form of pitching. Pitch, yeah. you is know it what? a pitch or am I just bringing it to your attention? That's, that's exactly what pitching is. I ain't pitching. Pitching is like you got a deck. You, you're, you're emailing somebody. Yeah. I'm bringing it to your attention that but, you need me. But that's nah. reaching, uh, reaching out as a pitch. Okay, yeah. fine. I pitched twice then. Y'all just trying to break me down? Fine, we're, I pitched twice. We're not breaking you down. We're not breaking you down. Breaking I you down. <laughs> no, twice. honestly, honestly, though, there's a big gem here because <laughs> not enough people are doing it in that way. Everyone's trying to go to LinkedIn. Hey, da, 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 da. Or, or uh, do you know this person within the company? Can mm. I get an email? No, I'm using social media. I'm using Instagram, which is free 99. Mm-hmm. And I'm letting you see me in action other than that for my corporate clients people have found me they've heard me somewhere they saw me do this people find me that's that's a bit quiet but wouldn't you say like you're leaving money on the table by not pitching on purpose yeah maybe yeah i'm not worried i'm doing pretty well (laughs) so i'm not worried Mm, yeah i'm just saying to maximize i'm sure but that's the thing we gotta why do we always have to maximize why can't we just coast Mm. i'm good i'm comfortable i don't like you know it's kind of like going to a buffet and if you eat too much you're full you got indigestion Mm -hmm. you're 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 not feeling well sure i can maximize and be you know getting all the money and all the bags and eating well and then i'm full and i'm stuffed i'm eating comfortably I'm mm. good. Mm. I'm good. So what is the end goal then? If if money's not a prime motivator, what is the end goal? To reach as many people as possible. Okay. In different ways. Mm. I want to publish a children's book. I want my program to be licensed in schools around the world so that children have access to it and not a single teacher could ever tell a child they talk too much ever again. And the same way we coach kids to become athletes, we're coaching kids to become speakers. That's my end goal. My end goal does not have a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm flourishing and I'm healthy and I'm straight because my end goal is not how much money I make. I told you, Ashley has to remind me how much money I make sometimes Mm -hmm. because I'm not paying attention. That's not my main priority. My family's comfortable. I'm comfortable. That's good. That's all that matters. Have you heard of the parable of the Mexican farmer? No. There's a parable where a Mexican farmer, uh, you know, he's a fisherman, actually, a fisherman. And he meets an American. And the American comes to him and is like, man, I see you have fish. You have a lot of fish you can catch. And he's like, yeah, I do. And he's like, you know, why don't you pick up all these fish, sell them across America, and grow your fish company? And he's like, well, yeah, I could. You know, but I already have a family to take care of, and I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty calm right now, mm. right? And he's like, but you can make a lot of money. And he's like, yeah, I could. Then what? Then you have a ton of money, and then, then you'd be like, to do what? To take care of your family and chill and relax. <laughs> and then he's like, see, I'm already doing that. Exactly. Mm. You know? So I was like, huh. I think not thinking about, like, don't get it twisted. I know my value. Mm-hmm. When it comes to my speaker's rates mm-hmm. and what I should be compensated, I don't play. Um, but I think if I'm operating in this space of the impact I have on others and what people say about me and how I make them feel, 
that is what's going to help me continue to make more money mm-hmm. versus like, oh, I got to scale. I got to launch this. I got to do that. My goal is to be a six figure business owner. My goal is to be a respected business owner. My goal is to be a business owner with integrity. My goal is to be a business owner who's helping people, not being known for how much money I make. Mm-hmm. And yeah, am I leaving money on the table every damn day? But who knows what comes with that paycheck, mm-hmm. right? Am I selling a bit of my soul? Am I losing a bit of myself? Am I burning myself dry? No, 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 no. I'm, what I'm doing right now works. I'm good. Yeah. And you know what? Like some entrepreneurs have different motivators. Sure. Like personally for me, money is like, for me, it's not everything, but I do want to make a lot of money. And I was watching an interview like the other day and like the guy was just like, well, after 50 million, well, he, for him, he's like, after 50 million, you don't really feel anything else. Yeah. Like to be rich, you need $15 million and you're okay. But anything after that, like you've already bought everything you can buy. You've already bought the mm-hmm. house, bought the clothes, mm-hmm. bought the cars, traveled everywhere. What else is there to buy? Like you can buy like a boat. Cool. Yeah. But the marginal, like the law of diminishing returns you get from having more money, 80 million is not going to feel any different than 60 million. It's not. Right? No. And like for you, you must have that like, okay, you know what? After this number, I'm okay. No, I think for me. Is it that? No, I think for me, it's being able to get myself things as a woman as that a woman. I <clears throat> maybe two, three years ago didn't think I could ever afford. Mm. So I, I, I did a solo trip to Italy a couple of weeks ago, and I got myself business class. And I was like, yeah, I did that. Like yeah. I got myself business class. That, to me, is far more special than flaunting that I'm a six-figure business owner. Mm. I could go out and buy myself this. I could treat myself to that. I don't have to think about it. If I want it, I'm going to do it. That feels so good. Mm -hmm. And no one needs to know how much money I make. I just know I feel good. I'm comfortable. My family's taken care of. My priorities are taken care of. And that's that's the best feeling. And and again, like there might be some things down the line um, that might allow me to make a redonkulous amount of money But even then, I know if I got a lot of money, I'm going to be investing it back into things. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be rolling around in it because that's just not how I was raised. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. I see big things in your future. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to pivot the conversation a bit because you just brought up, you know, being a woman. Yeah. You know, uh, as a woman entrepreneur, where does motherhood fall for you? I have three uh, furry pets. Those mm-hmm. are my children. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Bougie Bowser, Bougie Yeti, and Bougie Zuzu. Mommy mm-hmm. loves you. <laughs> um, but also, it's, uh, yeah, that's a question that comes up a lot. And it's not on my radar right now. And I think my background in education, I have for almost 20 years, not even 20 years, that's a stretch, almost 15, no, actually, I'm lying, 20 years. Jeez, Jam, come on now. I've cared for other people's children. So I've not had this maternal thing in me mm-hmm. because I've, I've always cared for, for others. Um, but I recognize not only as a woman in business, but a black woman in business, um, that I always have to work twice as hard and be two steps ahead. Um, so it's not on my priority right now, but if I was to ever become a mom, I know that there are things I need to have in place because I need to keep moving. I need to keep working. Mm. and if it's meant to be it's meant to be but right now i'm i'm building i'm building myself Uh, yeah i mean everyone has a preference to what they can do right i mean i I can't speak because i'm a man yeah so like whatever well you know what's funny people were asking my husband at work they're like so when are you and jam gonna settle down he's like have you seen my wife She's killing it right now. Like, she's good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, if she wants to have one, awesome. If she doesn't, I'll respect that. But right now, I think I'm in a zone where I don't know how long this is going to last. I feel like I'm surfing. Mm. And I don't know when that wave is going to bring me back to shore and say, sit down. So I'm riding this wave as long as I can. Um, But it's, it's not something I feel drawn to right now. Yeah. Is it a desire to have children? Is there a desire there? 
I don't even know I want to call it a desire. I think I had this conversation with my sister-in-law years ago, and she's like, sorry for the blunt question. When are you going to have children? Wow. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and I said, I, well, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm mentally ready. She's like, well, you're never going to feel mentally ready. I'm like, well, I want to feel emotionally ready. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're never going to feel emotionally ready. I'm like, well, I want to feel like I'm in the right career space because bringing in a child is more than just baby showers and first birthday parties. Like, Facts. There's a lot that goes into it, and I want to make sure that I'm in a place where I'm making my own money and I'm not relying on my husband to carry things. She's like, you're never going to feel financially ready. I go, okay, I got a question for you. She's like, okay, what? I go, why should I have a child? <laughs> this doesn't sound really appealing. <laughs> like, mm. You know, like, so I, if it's meant to be fine, right now I operate year by year, week by week. Right now I'm doing me. Mm. And that's fine. Do you get pressure from, like, your parents? No. No, 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 no. Lucky you. Thanks, <laughs> Mom. You getting pressure now, bro? What? A f- Bruh, stop it. My family is Jamaican. They want, and my mom is, you know, she's single. I know you get pressure, but like, has it been like been turned up a little bit more? Man. My in laws follow. Just me. So they did ask a lot, and I'm 34. So I'm 34. Um, and my in laws used to ask a lot because they're Eastern European, right? So they're like, it's like, what well, one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but like in Bulgarian. And then, like, I guess they follow me on social media and they see how busy I am. But I also told my husband, hey, yo, tell your family to leave my uterus alone. Mm. I'll let them know when I decide to do something. <laughs> So like your husband's in like your husband's siblings, how many does he have? Just as a sister. And she has a kid. She has two. So, so they're, they're good. And, but he's the only boy. He's uh, the son. Yeah, and you yeah. know, like in their the culture, son, like you're yeah, carrying the, the burden of the taking care of the mom and dad. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. So they want to see grandkids. Listen, last year, talking about money, last year, um, my husband switched gears and he went with a different company that was gonna pay him more. And it ended up being a very toxic Mm. company and i saw him deteriorate by like the week like Mm -hmm. mental health was up here wasn't sleeping properly wasn't eating properly was anxious and i was like babe you know if this is not good for you if you need to go like it's okay he's like well no like we're gonna be down to one income i was like no i got multiple streams you know for that reason and it reached a, a point where i was like you need to get out of this like i am i'm giving you a week to quit and he quit and i held it down for seven months so when you think about money that was that was big for me to see. Mm-hmm. Like I held down two car payments, insurance, this, that, groceries, Mortgage. all these things, vet bills, groceries, this and that and the other for seven months. And so my in-laws, when they like I remember my husband told me how grateful <coughs> his mom was to see me standing next to him as he talked about like this whole job thing. And she's like, Wow, like I really appreciated that. So I think they they know the reason why I'm not doing anything right now is because I am building. Mm-hmm. I am building. No one is creating these opportunities for me. I'm creating them for myself, and that's where my focus is right now. And I am not ashamed to, to, to say that. It takes a lot of courage to, to a lot admit of, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because a lot of women will succumb to the pressure. I've seen it in my family. Yeah, I'm a Libra on the cusp of being a Scorpio. That's not happening. You, you speak a lot about <laughs> horoscopes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's been a, it's been an ongoing trend here. It's my excuse. It's your excuse. It's like, my excuse. What, for my I husband. love the responsibility, the, like the taking accountability there. Keep, yeah. Continue on. Sorry yeah. to, to cut you off. Like what what is? Because I'm a Capricorn, right? So I don't know what that is. You don't. I'm the goat. That's what I am. I don't know what y'all That's do. That's my Earth sign. Mm. I'm a goat. Mm. I know you're jealous. <laughs> okay, so what is a Libra? What's a Scorpio? A like, Libra what, is balanced. Libra is balanced and fair and sociable and extroverted. And a Scorpio is, hey, yo, we'll tell you where to where to go. Mm. Mm-hmm. You making me feel unsafe? Ka-ka-ka, ka-ka. That's my Scorpio sound effect. Ka-ka-ka, ka-ka. That's a, that's I don't know if, it, if they make <laughs> the sound, but that's... Ka-ka-ka. So my friends say sleep, you. Scorpio. Shh, when they see my mm. Scorpio and it's coming. Shh, sleep. Mm. I swear I'm a nice person. Got you, got you, got you. Um, all right, I want to work towards wrapping up on some um, tips that our audience sure. can take away when it comes to speaking. Yes. You know, uh, for the person pre- um, preparing for a presentation. Yeah. For the person about to walk on stage in a few months or, right. you know, whatever they yep. have to do. What yep. are some tips that they can take away that uh, will help them jam out in yeah. their next session? Naturally, in moments like that, right, when you're getting ready for a big presentation or you're getting out, getting ready to go do a talk, the, you know, the imposter likes to show up. Imposter syndrome is alive and well. It even creeps up on me sometimes. Um, one, I need you to remind yourself, like, who invited who? 
Did you beg to be there? Did you creep through the back door? Or were you invited to speak at the speaking engagement? Because that imposter might feel like, tell you, oh, you're not good enough. No one's going to see value in what you have to say. And then when you, I like to encourage people, and I do it myself, is I audit myself. I go back on my website. I go back on my accomplishments. I visit my bank account. And it just reminds me of why I'm here, why I'm being invited to do the speaking engagement. And again, like when I go into, into these spaces, my goal is not to wow everybody. I don't put that unnecessary pressure on myself. If I wow one person, that's fine. If I wow five people, that's awesome. But I go out there and I most importantly, I have fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful um, for the opportunity to share and for my voice to be heard by other people. And so for people who are getting ready for those talks, like, be excited, mm -hmm. be happy, get hyped that you're, that you're doing this. And don't think that this is your last. Speak like you have another one tomorrow. Speak like you're being booked for next week. Like abundance mindset. You know what I mean? You're yeah. going on that stage and like, thank you, California, Sacramento, mm -hmm. thank you, because you got Dallas tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's how I operate. Um, but I, I, I think it's very important, again, going back to fun, to have fun as a speaker, to connect with your audience, and most importantly, to to like hype yourself up and remind yourself of who you are and what you have to share with other people and to go out and give it your all. Mm. Yeah. You know, you're a very confident person from like, mm. as long as I've known you in this past like hour and a half, what is like your one biggest fear that you have like of not accomplishing in your career? Um, I don't, I, I, I think I'm scared that I won't make enough time to enjoy life. Mm. Um, the pandemic put us in hyper mode, right? Like we were hustling and hustling because we didn't know when the next opportunity was gonna come. And it, this, this summer, I, I took the whole summer off. I mean, I still got booked for things, but my goal was to rest, my goal was to have fun, my goal was to eat, my goal was to be. And so I want to make sure while I'm building, while I'm scaling, while I'm launching, I'm also experiencing life mm -hmm. and I'm discovering who I am and what makes me me. I, I realized in Italy, it made me actually like break down and cry. I'm like, what are my hobbies? What are my hobbies? What are my, what are my interests? I was like, who am I? You know? So like, I, I want to spend some time with me and I want to put that energy in me the same way I put it into my business and the people that I help. That's my fear that mm. I'm gonna uh, let uh, I'm gonna allow a lot of moments to pass me by, mm -hmm. and I can't get those moments back. Yeah, I saw Joe Rogan posted something today on on IG. So it's like this guy. He has like uh, imagine like this long bar for this microphone, but there's like a dangling bag of money right here, mm -hmm. and it's this is like there's like a metal crown that goes around his head okay this guy's running with the bar but the money's right there oh and he's aging 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 oh. the suit falls off he becomes a skeleton and wow. then he falls into like a hole which is where he's getting buried and he dies there with like the money he was chasing yeah i don't want to be that person you know what i'm saying i don't want to be that person and again i think as entrepreneurs it's very I, I was actually going to do a reel about this today. Like, there's a lot of noise out there. Mm. There's a lot of people telling you you got to do this and you got to do that and you have to accomplish that and you got to launch this and you got to scale that. It's a lot of noise. So <sighs> my advice to the fellow entrepreneurs who are watching right now, know when to cup your ears. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need to take everything in. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's even things in this interview I might say right now that's not for you and you could – you know, skip that and, and move to the next point. But listen to your voice. Yep. Listening to my voice as an entrepreneur, as a creative, as a public figure, as an educator, as a black woman has been my number one resource and tool in my success. If I was listening to everybody else, I don't think I'd be where I am. So my, my two um, mentors are God and my gut. <laughs> That's who I consult with. They let me know what's up. And if I'm not feeling it, I'm not doing it. And between those two things and listening to my voice, I'm doing pretty well. You know, a crazy quote I, I, I read was, you know, prayer is you telephoning to God and intuition is God telephoning to you. Ooh. 
like I've never stopped thinking about that that line. You know, so That's whenever powerful. I get a flash of insight, I yeah. get I'm like, you know what, man? Let me take that walk. Yes. Like something is gonna come out of it, you know? So yeah. or or stopping and saying thank you. Thank you. I've been on stage and like mid talk, I'm like, hey, oh God, thank you for this. Or like I be walking off stage or I'm doing something. I'm always expressing gratitude. Mm -hmm. Um, it's what's kept me grounded, it's what's kept me focused. I don't know where I'm going next. And I'm in no hurry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm enjoying where I'm at right now. Um, I'm enjoying what I'm learning about myself. I'm, I'm immensely grateful for the opportunities I've been given to share my voice with other people because people don't have to listen to me. Mm -hmm. And so for all these moments, including this one right now, my heart is full, right? Like, and, I, I, and I hope somebody could hear this and go, yeah. yeah I got things to do. You're so right, especially like when you're mentioning like canceling all the noise. Like, I feel like there's dopamine now. Okay, so you know I can get dopamine from, like, social media. Mm. There's, like, entrepreneurship information dopamine. Like, oh, massively. Like, stock market, crypto. Crypto. It's like, you're missing out. NFTs. Oh, NFTs. NFTs. I uh. mean, I was doing an event a couple of months ago with Ashanti and NFTs. So, like, yeah. That's like a big flex. Th it was a massive flex. And mm. I sang with Ashanti. It's, it's, you just said that so casually. You're like. Yeah. It's, it's, she's just going to drop <laughs> that. Just drop that. You Keep know what I'm saying? Moving, you know what I'm saying? It's not biggie. <laughs> I mean, it was just a Tuesday night yeah. well, on a tuesday too yeah it was a, it was a this is not like a saturday no, 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 no. during the that week means you're important obviously yeah i, I know you are but i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> no it is again like there's so much noise out there there's so much distractions out there um being an entrepreneur you need your gut you need your gut and if you're not listening to your gut then you're not really cut out for this with that being said <laughs> Much love to you both. <laughs> Most definitely. With that being said, this is what you can control. So control your grind and control your life. I'm Alex. And I'm Owen Osinde. I'm Jam. <laughs> that's the show, y'all. Bang, Peace. bang. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>